63. 63 is a pretty odd age. No longer in the middle, but still too far away to see the light at the end. A bit too young to gripe or rage against the dying of the night. My work is far from done, and yet I have no marathons to run nor grand battles left to fight. Too young to retire, too old to hire. It's really quite a murky mire. There's no burning fire, just a smoldering pyre of unfinished business. Is it time to ask forgiveness, to make amend or two? I'm at the end of the beginning and the beginning of the end. My seventh inning stretch, the score are still pending. There is still some talk of winning, the way young people try to fill in their lack of preparation with hubris and a lot of youthful grinning. Now the fear of really losing permeates the air. Of course, anything could happen, but the outlook's only fair. I'm too young to die, but too old to care. My lifeblood's a leaky sieve, bestriding two great buttresses of time, betwixt but still between. I still sing the body electric, but the voice is just a little hoarse. I'm making far too much of this, of course. Is there nothing that can solve the dilemma of the ages, save our dying before becoming one with sages, as our bodies gradually become our cages? No longer reading, but simply flipping pages, consumed by how our bodies fail. And boys are still making an awful lot of noise, flailing in their youth with all their toys and ploys and pretty things. The clanging of such underlings seems faintly superficial at 63. I'm too busy building legacies from the fallacies I see as I look back at the ridiculousness of me. Though we all appreciate the setting sun, it's tainted cruel now as I ponder my last one. At 63, I contemplate the waning days in ways I never could have when I was young. The old songs are growing louder, sweeter, with so many still unsung. So we trod on, no throne of victory to sit upon. We're alive and mostly well, not quite in heaven, but neither quite in hell. Like being born into an old man's body with little left to sell, but so much more to tell and fewer grown-ups left to tell it to falling for the spell of meaning as from life we're weaning. We carry on as they did in ancient Babylon. We march, we limp, we do what we can to pimp out the harsh days. We barter with this soon expiring milk called life as our souls lift ever upward against the certain ilk of strife in this marvelous theater of the absurd. No, not a word of death is heard. Someday in the haze of 83, some 20 years hence, I will talk about the good old days when I was 63, the better part of life before me, when everything made sense.